Here at the Boca Raton Resort and Club in South Florida, at the new Clinical Drug Evaluation Unit meeting, or the NCDEU, a study was presented that looked at the prescribing patterns among primary care physicians regarding patients with major depressive disorder. So can you tell me why it's important uh, to look at primary care in terms of major depressive mm -hmm. disorder? Yeah, I think a lot of patients with major depression are actually seen by primary care physicians. For whatever reason, it's the first place where they are noticed, seen by it. And a lot of people are kind of unwilling to go to specialty mental health care because of stigma or because of access problems. You know, they really have trouble getting an appointment within a reasonable amount of time. And so a lot of people will be managed by primary care. And I think it is a large burden within primary care that patients with depression will not just present with depression, but they may also come in more frequently for other complaints or it will present in other sort of somatic symptoms or it may, may complicate the treatment of other medical illnesses. Maybe they'll have trouble adhering to their diabetes treatment because they're feeling depressed. So there's a lot of reason that they'll show up in primary care and there's a lot of reason that primary care doctors will want to address it. So, right. Mm -hmm. So um, your message for what they could do is perhaps monitor patients more closely if possible or just sort of mm -hmm. ask them. You said they use the PHQ-9, which is a relatively quick measure in primary care, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is very quick and I actually have a lot of my patients just fill it out while they're waiting in the waiting room for me and there's plenty of time for patients to do that. So they fill it out, they give it to me, and I then compare the scores against the last time and I try to see if I'm missing anyone who's not improving. Or sometimes it tells me that people are improving more than they actually realize and it helps me not make more treatment changes than I need to give them too many medications. Okay, so ideally, like what mm -hmm. sort of interval would you want between, you know, assessment, three months, six months, do you know? Um, I actually would do it almost every time they come in. The PHQ-9 assesses the last two weeks of symptoms, so I will give it that often to patients. And I would say every time you come in, because people are probably not being seen that often in a primary care setting. Okay. So every time they come in, you can compare the results. And it also helps them sometimes reinforce this to them that they are getting better or that there's something that they need to treat. This is good for patient education. This has been Damian McNamara reporting from Boca Raton, Florida. Mm -hmm.